regime. Benam Ben Talablu is a senior Iran analyst at the Foundation for Defense of Democracy, a US think tank focused on foreign policy, national security. He's in Australia as a guest of the Australia Israel Jewish Affairs Council and joined me a short while ago. Behan Ben Talablu, thank you so much indeed for joining me. The US Secretary of State, uh, Mike Pompeo, he very quickly blamed. Iran for that drone attack in Saudi Arabia. How much evidence do you think there is for that? Well, great to be with you. Uh, unfortunately, when assessing the evidence here, the question must be asked, who stands to gain? And the Islamic Republic of Iran stands to gain when its strategic competitor, ideological competitor, and petroleum-based competitor across the Gulf, Saudi Arabia, has its oil facilities damaged. Uh, we know the Houthis in Yemen have long been firing uh, at uh, different Saudi oil installations during the course of this four-year war on the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, now there's evidence that the threat could have come from the north. Iran has proliferated a bunch of drones and missiles throughout the region, and so it's highly likely that whatever the vector of attack, Iraq or Yemen, Iran's hand is behind this. Right, so it's either a direct attack by them, in your view, or the Houthi rebels uh, attacked but with Iranian equipment. They've actually claimed responsibility um, can we believe that just off the bat? Well, I think the Houthis, A, may want responsibility as the relationship with Iran enters more into public light and as they enter uh, part of this, this greater constellation of foreign forces that Iran calls the axis of resistance. These are basically anti-status quo uh, terrorists and non-state actors across the Middle East that Iran controls or gives money or weapons through. Uh, but either way, Iran has a habit of acting indirectly throughout the Middle East using proxies, partners, so that way its own homeland can be safe while it conducts war abroad. Well, uh, just give us a, a quick overview. Uh, what is Iran up to in Yemen, in Iraq, in Lebanon, the countries uh, around its uh, sort of southern and, and western perimeters? What is it up to? What's its big game? You know, the great game for the Islamic Republic of Iran is the four decade long goal of exporting its Islamic revolution. It is going to politically and militarily stand with states that are anti status quo, anti Israel, anti West, like the Assad regime. And it is going to work with uh, grassroots, uh, violent non state actors and terrorist forces to co opt and control states that are against the Islamic Republic. And that's why Iran has intervened in Iraq since the fall of Saddam, to make sure that that state has a system of government greatly akin to Iran. In Yemen, Iran is the foremost opportunist, taking advantage of the war in the Arabian Peninsula there. Uh, the Houthis are not a full-on proxy, but they're a group that Iran uh, is seeking to bring under its wing through the provision of support. And in Lebanon, most unfortunately, that country is being subsumed uh, by this group Hezbollah, which is essentially an arm of Iran's foreign and security policy apparatus. Uh, it is growing in scale and scope in that country, dominating the banking and business uh, system there, as well as the parliament. And Iran's goal is to have this entire region in chaos so that it itself can remain ascendant. And of course, I didn't even mention Syria, where it's also uh, quite active uh, supporting militias and also apparently with some uh, forces of its own. How's the United States likely to respond? Now, you say we've, we've seen uh, President Trump tweet that he's locked and loaded, but he hasn't actually said who he thinks is responsible himself. Pompeo has, he hasn't. Uh, how do you think it will respond? Uh, I think however the U.S. plays the evidence game, meaning whatever further evidence that the U.S. brings about to prove it's Iranian or an Iran-backed Shia militia operating in Iraq, or if they ultimately decide to double down and return to the claim that the Yemenis had put forward, whoever they fully blame, um, I think that country or that entity would likely be subject to some kind of sanctions. But besides the U.S., the Saudis are going to be a player here because it's, this attack has taken a significant Saudi capacity offline. It spooked oil prices, and the Saudis may actually seek to double down in Yemen and try to respond to the Houthis' claim uh, that it was them. Now, finally, what does this tell us about Iran, this attack, if it is Iran or maybe if it's just through a proxy, but what does it tell us about Iran if it does ever get its hands on a nuclear weapon, which obviously uh, Donald Trump says it's been trying to do despite sanctions on it for some time now? 
I think with or without a nuclear weapon, Iran has this ideological and strategic imperative, so long as the Islamic Republic is in power, to export this revolution and co-opt uh, or create uh, a bunch of uh, violent non-state actor movements across the Middle East to exert its influence. So that's going to be there regardless. With a nuclear weapon, of course, or with a nuclear capability even, the Islamic Republic is going to feel even more emboldened to carry out these types of attacks uh, that it is engaging in today, whether from its own homeland or from abroad. Ultimately, Iran is trying to disguise its hand right now because it's afraid of some kind of retribution. An emboldened Iran, an Iran with a nuke, may not be so afraid. Well, that is uh, very troubling stuff. Uh, Bahan bin uh, Talablu, thank you so much indeed for your time. Thank you.